First things first, Jonathan, how are you? Good, man. Fantastic. It's very good to hear now. Very interesting record that you've made, and there's so many things we can uh, delve into. Yeah. But I, I think we we should just start with the first song, Mars Fan, because... Yeah. Well, maybe it's better if you, you tell the story, but how did you kind of arrive at Jim Pembrose and, and kind of the the idea of this song? Yeah, um, well, I was really um, inspired by... some Somebody had sent me... Um, a video clip of Jim Pembroke from the band Wigwam when he had passed away and it was during the COVID time and I clicked on it and I had heard of Wigwam before, you know, um, they're from Finland and, but I didn't really, um, you know, I, I you know, um, like me, I was not an um, expert. Sure. Uh, so, and, um, but I saw the video of them on some show in, in 1973 or something like this. And I was like, man, this, uh, I was like, uh, who is this guy? This is, you know, the, 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 you know, um, this is awesome. And um, I went on a deep dive and I found this thing that he made in 1972 called uh, Warm uh, uh, Rumors. And it had like 6,000 plays on Spotify or something like this. And, um, and so I found some songs on there and just the way that he sort of, purposefully shot himself in the foot um, commercially on this thing. He talks in these little like, um, you know, like in these sort of like these goofy accents and uh, and he presents the album like it's a talent show. And it's just very strange, you know, and, and, and I was and, and it just kind of dawned on me. I was like, that's the kind of record that I want to make because these are the kind of things that I love. You know, I mean, I, I love to listen to Beefheart. I love to listen to Frank Zappa. You know, th this is the shit that I love. So I was like, maybe I could make something kind of like that. So, yeah. And I've listened through the entire album and it almost feels like, as you kind of mentioned, you have to give yourself permission to 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 do this, to, to kind of go outside of the color, uh, outside of the lines a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so what was that process for you like mentally well how did you get ready to do that yeah well i guess it was like you know going through the pandemic and going through sort of like the death of my solo music um career <laughs> you, you know i mean just yeah. like every you know d during that time and stuff so you sort of like finally reached a point where you know truly don't don't really have um a direction don't really have um, a connection with any fans or anything so i was just kind of like i you know i don't it's not that i don't care what folks think because i mean you certainly do but you kind of hope to get to a place where you can just be free to make what you truly want to make um regardless of who comes you know um of 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 um uh, you know of um uh, of um uh, who comes back you, you know and 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 stuff and yeah and just kind of like you know being the like psychedelic guitar jammy california canyon guy you know is fun for like a while but then it's you know it's kind of like well maybe i gotta figure something else out so but you even i suppose allude to this uh in a couple of the songs where you kind of uh reference or, or talk about the industry and how, how you fit it in within that and even i can't remember now which which song was out of t the top of my head but you kind of uh, mentioned uh, that you've tried to do it for, for a while in in what you think they expected from you, but now you've kind of figured out. Well, no, it's it's more about me. Yeah, well, it's more about no. It's it's more about being or the song. Let's put it that way. Yeah, it's more about like my uh, finding like the true, you know, finding like the true sound or the true thing that I might have to say or a song that truly feels like my song. Yeah, and 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 not me shooting for uh, you know part of something that I've heard you, you know what I mean like to, to where you you, you kind of try to cop a sound or something like that or uh, you know this one I you know um, if you listen maybe like to Bonamassa or a song like that it's like that's sure. a new that's a new style of song that I, I've um, never heard so yeah <clears throat> and then talking about for instance Bonamassa there the strings that you've incorporated into this album was it fun uh, composing string uh super parts? fun yeah yeah like i mean um it's like the first song um you know um uh, marzipan i think that's the first time that i've done a big like string arrangement like that you know and, mm -hmm. and it has a, and it kind of has a big band 
that it kind of shows up in there too. It's the first time I've done anything like that. But loads of the strings on the album are done by uh, done uh, done by this cat named Drew uh, um, Erickson, who's okay. you know he's he's um, he's you know extremely talented that does all the strings for uh, all the Father John stuff and the and the Wise Blood, and you know he's just like extraordinarily talented. So yeah, but I mean super fun. Yeah, because uh, well. You mentioned something interesting earlier, which is uh, as a producer and as somebody who's made music for, for quite a while now, is it kind of, how would you put it? Is it difficult to to know if an, uh, if an idea is original or if, if it's genuine, if that makes sense? Because you've yeah. been around so much music. Yeah, I mean, you just, I guess you just have to go with your gut, you know, to kind of say like, you know, uh, is this something that I'm that's new and real or is it just me trying to be someone else and so you know and and i mean i think you when you try to you if you use it as a jumping off point to like you know something that inspires you you know that can be that can be great because then that can get you sure. to sort of like to the like to the to basically like to the next thing but you know i mean if you just kind of cop a thing from top to bottom it can, it can only be like so exciting or something like that and so you know, with um, um, like with this, I culled through lots of lots of um ideas and fragments and demos for a long time. You know, and and then try and then found things that were like okay, you know, like um, you know, like a song like uh, a song a song like uh a, a song like um East, um L A is it, it's called. That's a song yeah. that I've that I've sat down at the piano and tried to write for years. You, you know, maybe like for seven years or something like that, you know, and it, it was just something that I had. So finally, like to finish that was, was just like, damn, like, you know, you know, I mean, uh, so yeah, I mean, it, it's like, that was a, that was an, um, it was, it was an um, individual sort of like song that was like strong enough to base it, base it, Yeah. I mean, it, so, um, you know, I guess basically like the point was to just, basically was to take my time and just have all strong um ideas and like not just um you know a song that's kind of like not really that cool so <laughs> yeah. fair enough and it, is it difficult then to or difficult is it what is the process like in in kind of working on these songs then because i believe you did a lot of it yourself obviously uh at some point you 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 get friends to help you along but yeah most of it was done well i was just gonna say most of it was done most of the album 90 percent or whatever was done um in solitude just like mm -hmm. me no no engineer nothing just me and uh then i got then i did a trio session to um uh, and with um with my buddies uh, uh uh jake and drew and 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 uh and an um engineer and we tracked as a as a trio for like a week or so okay. and so that's okay. when you get all the drums and bass like you know um, like on the marzipan song or, or or the father time you know you know but um lots of it i had built up the beds of the songs and i um you know, uh, you know, and, and, and the bass and the piano was just uh, was was just um, empty. Okay. So that, and then um, but yeah, and then um, I mean, and the mixing process was all just the same way. It was all just like completely um alone. And yeah, it was just kind of like that's the way that I started. You know, like when I was um when I was a teenager. You know, there there was no one around. It was just me. You know what I mean? So. You know, and, and, and so yeah, um, um, basically that, that seemed you know seemed seemed like the strongest thing you know, um, basically to get the songs out there. Yeah, what I find very interesting about that process then is, uh, as you mentioned, it's quite solitary, and I can mm -hmm. imagine the concept of time kind of floats away as you're uh, working, and yeah. I can even imagine being in the studio as, as somewhat of a fever dream. So. How much did kind of the, the way that you worked on these songs influence kind of the, the lyrics and that stream of consciousness narrative style that you had? Yeah, I mean, it's in there, you know, like that's all it, they, I think they worked um, hand in hand the same. On um, forever, like um, explorations 
and then they would be they would they would kind of be put you know um uh, in a folder and, and then i would come back to them like a month after that and go like that was kind of cool and weird like what the hell was i thinking you know like and so yeah i mean you know and there's a few songs like that like um like something like the father of time song was, was kind of like that it was just like you know something that i didn't know anything about that being anything it's you know it's got that big hole where it where it, like the strings kind of start to descend and then like the drums go away and, and all this kind of stuff that you know I, I, you can't really plan you know but somehow i was uh, inspired to do that for a minute didn't really know in the moment what it was because it was just me you know there wasn't a band playing there wasn't like a word being sung so then i came back to it and i was like huh there's something there you know so there was there were certain things that you have to kind of follow uh -oh. it's gone. you kind of have to follow your first you know you follow your first uh inspiration and and you know and don't treat that like it wasn't um important so and is it then now kind of uh in retrospect that you look at some of these songs and kind of figure out for yourself what they were about or don't you try to analyze it that deeply uh i mean some sometimes that is absolutely true C certain songs are like uh uh basically were are like stronger possibly from your subconscious <clears throat> and then right. you come back to them and, and you're like oh okay i see what, what kind of what that was about this song Sorry, you, you, um, you can answer if you like no 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 it's fine so then um so then <clears throat> but then there are certain songs that are certainly um <clears throat> you know that are kind of like autobiographical and like straight up mm. you know and and that you know and so it's kind of like a it's sort of like a mixture yeah and then w what i also find interesting when i listen to this album i can really kind of pinpoint all the the different types of influences uh yeah. you've had yeah. From from Hank Williams to Lightning Hopkins to yeah. Charlie Parker, obviously. So it's really yeah. interesting that even without knowing you, I kind of get a sense right. of, of what you're about. So that's that's okay, yeah. very well yeah. done, I think. A big time, you know, really into all that stuff, really into jazz, really into folk, really into blues, really into fucking anything. So, yeah. Whenever you said, and as you mentioned, it's it's quite a an experimental way to work, but at some point you have to kind of um, focus in a little bit, a bit, I suppose. So, so what's, what's that process like then when, when you kind of have to go, okay, I, I'm going to make an album. There have to be a certain number of songs on it. I want to kind of have them feel like some, somewhat of a co cohesive whole, even though it's very diverse, of course, but um, how do you hone in into kind of that finished album? I mean, I think, you know, at this point for me, there's been many albums made, not just for me, but for sure. things that I, but um, so, you know, um, I think I, I always kind of shoot for um, sort of, sort of like an excess, so, you know, and uh, usually I'll have 19 songs cut or, you know, something, sometimes, you know, um, more than that, you know, in the case of um, Rare Birds, I had 23 songs or something, you know, on the back burner, you know, you know at the same time, but this time it was kind of like that too, where, you know, I just basically use my gut to go with the strongest um, ideas and, and be like, those are the best, you know, that's, and you can use your friends, mm, you know, that's something enough. that I, all the time, you know, use my, use like my partner to, you know, and like, she's like, no, nah, that one's not as good, you know, and I'm like, hmm, that's interesting that she said that or something like that. Um, So, yeah, I mean, and then. And then just finding, you know, just just sort of um, looking at the big fucking picture and seeing, you know, what this thing is. And, you know, there's a couple songs like on this album, like, um, well, there's, you know, one that I think of um, um, is maybe one of the last songs. I think it is the last song, um, uh, which is called um, Riding in the Jag. Yeah. And it's just like this lush, big, sort of like a journey, like a driving song vibe. And I was like... Maybe we don't, maybe that shouldn't, you know, it's kind of long, kind of mid-tempo. It's like, maybe it shouldn't be on there. But then it was just like, no, but it's, it, it, you know, I, I mean, it was a part of it. You know, it, it was a part of the process. It, 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 it was a part of that time. And so I'm just like, yeah. So, it's just, I mean, it's just like that. It, it, it sort of, you know, it, it can be like a document, you know, kind of, of like of the time and place. Mm -hmm. 
you, you mentioned uh, using people around you as uh, kind of soundboards. Yeah. So, and and I know you've uh, used uh, uh, you played this song to your wife before, "Hey Love." But what what was yeah. her impression of that song when you first played it? Loved it! Oh my god! Like you know, she knew it, that it, it was for her and stuff. And I played it for her at our um, wedding. And it's just a jokey, sappy, cheesy love song. <laughs> oh, no, I, I really like it. And then you mentioned riding in a jack, where you kind of uh, I, I don't know if the, if you if it's autobiographical but you talk about this turning point where, where you're just kind of screwing around and then you met her and then things change so yeah, not- yeah that is it is it's me going out to the bars every night being single it's, yeah it's yeah. Uh, no so it's 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 cool to see those kind of uh links between the songs as well yeah, man. Uh, what what is this interesting that then what does music kind of I mean, it's maybe too grand a question, but what if has music meant to you over the years? And has that idea then changed over time? Yeah. Um, well, it's been my um, it's been my like salvation. It's been my uh, my best friend. It's been my um, escape. You know, been my thing to that to fixate on and focus on and obsess on for a really really long time. Um, and it actually hasn't changed you know that's kind of kind of stayed the same and i think it will stay the same the songwriting process and the sound like my kind of um uh compositional style of, of a song that i keep coming back to is really this kind of the same as it's been since i was even like a teenager okay. and I, i'm like me i have songs that i wrote as a teenager that are similar to something like um you know you know something like a current song you know it'll have a okay. it'll have like a saxophone fucking solo and a long weird fucking outro that goes on forever and weird like for interlacing like parts of all you know what i mean so it yeah, so it's been very consistent you know there's also a song on the album called Wim Hof now i have to yeah. mention him because i'm dutch and uh yeah. So, so, what was your inspiration behind that song? It's, uh, I, I had to look up adrenochrome, but it's it's kind of what makes uh, adrenaline and epinephrine, or, or yeah, exactly, like that, right? But yeah, and like, um, I got a chance to meet him and see him up the road, and I just thought he was such a character, you know. <laughs> I thought he was like so cool, and I was like, whatever he's whatever he's doing, that's what I want to be doing. <laughs> <laughs> so no, yeah. Right. And, um, so that, that that's what inspired it. And then, well, you mentioned kind of during the COVID, it felt like your profession was over. Like, like okay, uh, Jonathan Wilson, the solo artist, is 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 uh, the curtains have closed. So, so now that you've made made a new album, and then I, I don't know if you have any intention of touring it, but what, mm-hmm. how do you look towards the future with with what you're doing now? Well, like me, I want, um, like me, I want to bring it to some stages and stuff. But you know, as far as like how that goes down, or if it makes sense, and who's involved, you know, I'm that part I don't know yet. And you know, I'm about to have to go on tour to finish um, in uh, a big long tour in in um, South America. So maybe okay. in, in 2024, maybe. Yeah. Okay, but does, the there is there is the the wish that to. to to play it live at some point yeah yeah sure yeah okay awesome and then last question about playing live because there are so many textures and especially with this album then so many intricacies and, and mm-hmm. sonic elements uh, wow. is that difficult to replicate live well um if you if you have you know uh you know hundreds of hundreds of thousands of pounds or like or dollars <laughs> it's, it's not <laughs> because you know basically like um like to do it right this album would be it would be a big band with some strings and horns and right. stuff which would be really fun to do and it's something that we can do maybe for, maybe for like a few special concerts or something but probably not a whole tour so <laughs> fair enough all right jonathan um well thank you so much for making time for me and uh best of luck with the album sounds good man <laughs>